scary. Um, it is so wonderful to see so many faces <laughs> that I get to see a glimpse of on home assignment. Um, but now you get to see each other as well. So it's a wonderful way <laughs> Uh, of connection, I think, uh, this morning and, uh, or yeah, afternoon for you guys. Um, sorry, you're going to hear me probably do that a lot. Um, I, I want to start by what I always do, and those of you who have seen me on home assignment uh, know, I always start by saying thank you. Um, thank you so much for your support, um, whether it's working together for uh, however many years, Doug and, and Ron and Sharon and Joan, sorry, mix the couples together, but um, <laughs> you know, whether it's working with you guys uh, or uh, yeah, just the, the prayer support and the, also the financial support that have kept us here uh, in Japan uh, just this past month. So two weeks ago, we celebrated our 20th anniversary. Joan, I'm sure that you, that's exciting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Some sort of uh, statistical uh, point, but yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, April 24th, uh, 2001 when we landed here in Japan and, and Doug and Sharon graciously came and picked us up from the airport. Um, and since then, uh, not just Doug and Sharon, uh, but all of you have supported us so graciously and we are so thankful for that. And we're glad that we can connect today and hopefully uh, share face-to-face -face what's been happening and uh, answer some questions as well. Uh, to start off with, uh, as Carol kind of let out of the bag already, uh, Melissa and I are not in the same square <laughs> on this call. We're not even in the same country. Um, so uh, with uh, COVID, uh, our, our oldest son, Noah, is graduating from college this year. Uh, and uh, we were uh, looking towards, you know, for the past year, <laughs> planning for uh, coming back to the States and, uh, and participating in his graduation and celebrating with him. Um, and uh, yeah, it looked like that wasn't going to happen for quite a while, which, you know, caused some, some mourning for us, probably uh, more for, for Melissa, uh, but uh, some mourning for us of what do we do? And then um, just a few weeks ago, uh, the college that he's at said that they will allow two people uh, to come uh, and participate in the graduation. Um, and that led us to a whole season of prayer <laughs> of what do we do now mm -hmm. during this season of COVID and international travel. And, um, and also uh, both of the grandmas uh, had been slated to attend. And, and uh, so we had the unfortunate news of, of calling. Uh, and uh, as I said to my mom, I have bad news. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go to Noah's graduation and uh and she was like what <laughs> because Melissa and Elijah mm -hmm. are coming home so Melissa and Elijah are home in in uh, uh Buffalo there uh and I will be going back in July there's a big special event that's happening in July it, uh, <laughs> and and my mom's on the call so I won't explain it too much but it is my mother's birthday uh it's a it's a uh, monumental birthday so i didn't want to miss that and uh and also we are now transitioning from our fourth year of this term to our fifth year um when uh when i was on when we were on deputation before we even went to the field uh, i met with florence miller uh found one of the founding missionaries of our field in japan and her first bit of advice to me was never stay in japan for five years five years is too long <laughs> her first term she ended up staying for five years and she said it was it was pretty detrimental to her so don't stay for five years if at all possible <laughs> uh we did that our first term and now we're doing it again this term um uh florence was right i think uh so we're, we're also taking a short break this summer uh so melissa and elijah are getting a, an extended break uh, there are ministry reasons and legal reasons why i can't be home longer um, so I'll be headed home in July, beginning of July, and then we will all come back to Japan uh, in the middle of August. Um, again, this is uh, not a work trip, so we would love to see you, but we will not be seeing you, other than family, sorry. Um, so uh, again, thank you so much, and that's kind of where we are now. Um, and I just wanted to give Melissa a chance uh, to share uh, uh, a bit, but first I want to update you. Uh, on what's happening here. So uh, we are closing our time at the uh, Komio Christian Church. Uh, as, as you know, uh, we started that, uh, began that work in 2009, um, actually the fall of 2008. 
uh, and uh, have had uh, ups and downs along the way. Um, we had our uh, annual fellowship gathering, kind of like the the, uh, the Japan Baptist Conference triennial, but we do it every year. Uh, yesterday, and we did it virtually, and I was I was really uh, touched by what one of the I consider newer pastors, uh, Higashi Kensak Sensei. Um, he shared out of Isaiah 46, uh, where it says, uh, listen to me, you descendants of Jacob, all the remnant of the people of Israel, you whom I, you whom I have upheld since your birth and have carried since you were born, even to your old age and gray hairs. I am he, I am he who sustained you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. And it just it really, it really touched me yesterday as I was reading that, that over this 20 year span, it has definitely been God who's been carrying us along, who has been sustaining us, who has been continually <laughs> rescuing us from the, the follies that we enter into. Mm -hmm. uh, but even within our church plant, um, so over the last 13 years or so, uh, God has continued to just carry us along. He has continued to uh, sustain us. And um, last year, as you know, uh, we had uh, the opportunity to call a Japanese pastor, Saijo Sensei, Pastor Saijo. Uh, and then we cleared a big hurdle uh, this spring. We, we uh, called him, and it's pretty common here in Japan to call a pastor uh, with, a, with a kind of a, not really probationary, but an evaluation period. So uh, it gives a, an opportunity in the Japanese culture for both sides to step forward without losing any face and say, this isn't working. So uh, we, we did a one year evaluatory period uh, and, uh, and in, in March, uh, so just last month still, uh, the church uh, voted to continue to have Sensei continue. And Sensei also said, no, this is a really good fit for me. Yeah. So it's been really wonderful to see how God has called the right person uh, to be in the right place at the right time mm -hmm. to serve him. Uh, and so uh, we have been transitioning things uh, over the past year. Uh, but now we can kind of hit that full throttle and, uh, and transfer everything over, uh, over the next year, uh, to the pastor and to the church board. So, uh, yeah, we've really seen God do some, some amazing things, uh, and, uh, are, are grateful for that. Um, we have uh, just, as you have <laughs> been struggling with COVID, uh, with the Corona, uh, situation, uh, I was just talking with Tom uh, from uh, Pineland Baptist and, and how they are, are now transitioning or have transitioned online. Uh, and we have done the same thing. Um, we kind of had an, an off again, on again, off again relationship, as I say. Um, we were not able to meet last spring and then met from the summer all the way through November uh, with precautions in place. Uh, but then <clears throat> starting uh, at the end of November, we had a baptism and then since then, we've been online. Um, online for us means, uh, as you've seen in our newsletter, I'm sure, uh, we do things, uh, we record things on Thursday, on, uh, not Thursday, that's Pineland. We record things on Saturday and then, and then post things uh, so that people can view them on Sunday. Um, and uh, yeah, you're, feel free to go and check that out. Subscribe, hit the bell, you know, all that kind of stuff um, that helps, helps with uh, analytics. But yeah. Um, yeah, uh, those of you who speak Japanese, that might be a benefit to you. Those of you who don't, it, it's, <laughs> it might just sound like a, a clanging cymbal or uh, <laughs> some big noise. So, uh, yeah, so the COVID uh, situation has, has worsened here, actually, in the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. We were actually able to meet for Easter worship, uh, and we had a board meeting that day because things just escalated, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, COVID cases were about 10 times or 12 times what they had been. So it just kind of shot up a big spike and we decided that we should go back online. So we, we met uh, for, for Easter Sunday, which is awesome. We had communion together and great fellowship, uh, socially distanced, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, so now we're back uh, doing things online. So uh, yeah, we really covet your prayers and in that regard, and we'll talk more about that later. Uh, but we've also had some developments in our family. So uh, I'll turn it over to Melissa and, yeah. and, uh, and let her take it away. All right. Well, good to see you guys. Thank you for joining us. 
Um, yeah, I'm here basically because Noah's graduating. Yay! Four years. <laughs> it goes by so quickly. Um, I can't believe it. I mean, we haven't been in the country his whole four <laughs> years of college. Um, but I'm so thankful and blessed that we will be able to be on campus to see the ceremony. Um, we still have to be separated. The graduates and the professors will be in one location and the attendees will be in another. But um, not just seeing Noah, but I'll also be blessed to finally meet his roommate's mother, who we have become friends online. And um, that's just going to be such a huge blessing to meet face to face like that. So Noah graduates May 8th from Houghton College. He graduates with a dual major, I think that's the right term, um, in history and theology. Unfortunately, um, a big prayer you could have for Noah is he had hoped to go on for graduate school. At this time, um, graduate schools are saying, if you have not already attended four years with us, we're not gonna open up to new people entering into graduate programs. So that means Noah has to go to plan B, and I'm not quite sure he has figured that all out yet. So um, I'm thankful for my mom. Of course, my mom's always open arms. Noah's willing to come back and stay here and figure things out as long as he needs to take that. So keep him in prayer as he tries to figure out what plan B is. Um, and then his hope is next year, he'll be able to enter into a program. He wants to do history and specifically Japanese and American history. Um, his thesis paper was on, I think Paul can speak more closely to this because he helped edit it, but the relationship, American and Japanese relationship and what led to World War II, something like that. <laughs> so yeah, his professors were quite shocked when they interviewed him about his studies and how are you going to do this? And he's rattling off, I guess, some different Japanese publications and they're like, but you don't speak Japanese. And he's like, uh, yes, mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> so he, yeah. he is, had did a really good job with that. So anxious to see him there. Um, Jonah mm -hmm. is finishing his second year at Houghton College. And Jonah is still very much gung-ho soccer is his number one focus. Um, he has declared a major right now. He's looking at um, business management. So just continue to pray for Jonah, just for direction. Um, Jonah is a very... Um, he bounces back and forth from different things. A uh, very lighthearted soul. He um, accepts people where they're at. Um, but now next starting his third year, Noah won't be on campus. So I don't know how that will play into his continuing to adjust to American culture. So but one thing I do, I am so thankful and I praise God for Houghton. Um, it's truly been a blessing of a college. And with that comes the soccer team. Um, the coach is, um, well, this is the second coach. Noah was under a different coach and they recently got a new coach, but both experiences just very much, you know, talking to the boys about balance in life. It's not all soccer. It's not all academics. It's a balance in life. And with that also their spiritual life. Um, what a blessing to see the guys huddle and pray on the field. Um, the guys get together and have Bible studies and um, just really have built a good relationship there. So I'm very thankful for that. So keep Jonah in prayer as he continues to find direction in this next third year of schooling. And Elijah, Elijah's 16. Oh my, my baby. <laughs> He hopes to get his uh, driver's permit while we're here in the States. Um, so that will be an exciting adventure. Um, he has been online 
for the school year, uh, an American online school. Um, maybe not the best choice, but for us, it was the best choice. In Japan, many of you know, he commutes an hour and a half to brick and mortar school. That's three different trains. When everything blew up last um, summer, my heart just was not at peace about that commute and just um, decided it was best for him to be online. So he is a trooper. He, uh, he gambares very well, meaning he perseveres, he suffers well through it. Um, he's a procrastinator and yet all of a sudden he'll have all these assignments and boom, 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 they're done. So he <laughs> we're all kind of looking forward to getting through this season of online school. And with that, we're hoping to get him vaccinated while we're here these three months so that he can return in August and return going to Kansai Christian School and having that commute once again. He's anxious for that and even we are. Um, I, the blessing there, the grace there has been High VA, which is high schoolers born again. It's a non-denominational uh, youth gathering and they've gone online, but um, the pastor who leads his group he's just so faithful in getting those kids connected and reaching them in and um, I'm just so thankful for that and technology you know they're more with it than I am so he does in fact this morning he was online with a classmate for like an hour and a half so you know just thankful for that yeah, so that, that's the kids. <laughs> that's where we're at. So, <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Anne. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, you know, we have about five minutes here before we break into groups and stuff. I want to just talk about next steps for us. So uh, we have this year of transition that's happening uh, from now until next summer, and then we'll come on home assignment uh, and spend 2022 to 2023 seems unreal to be saying those numbers and I'm sure for many of you it's even more unreal than me but 2022 to 2023 uh, visiting you uh, where you are uh, so uh, looking forward to that uh, and spending the year uh, back in uh, western New York um, and then uh, we will return uh, to Japan in 2023 uh, to begin the next church plant um, and so between now and when we leave next year, we'll be working with the evangelism committee of the, of the Japan Baptist Conference in, in choosing the next location. Um, I might have to have Doug come over, drive us around to the to all the different city offices like he did for, our, our, for the Komyo church plant and gain information. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's our plan for the next for the next uh, year uh, is transitioning things at the church uh, and begin to plan for what will happen when we come back from home assignment uh, and then a home for that year uh, and get to see all of you uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully rest up a little bit as well. I, I want to just close by saying um, I have so many things in my office that remind me of you. Um, and and uh, when we read in Hebrews about the cloud of witnesses that we have, uh, you are <laughs> my cloud of witnesses, and I want to thank you for that. And I want to give a special shout out to the person who drew this. <laughs> Abe, I don't know if you remember, but you drew this probably, uh, I don't know, maybe three years ago when you sent it to me in the mail. And I have it hanging in my office, and I look at it, and I think of Madison, South Dakota, and I think of the time that we were able to play soccer together in your basement. You probably don't remember this because you were really <laughs> <laughs> um, but it encourages me. And so I just wanted to say thank you uh, for sending that. And whether uh, it's cards or notes or emails, uh, pictures, whether, you know, it's the Molossan family Christmas card or the Gabriel family Christmas card, uh, whatever it is that people send, it is uh, encouraging for us uh, to have that connection with you because you really do help us carry on uh, with God's work here. Um, and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Uh, so the, uh, Karen, I'm not quite sure how you want to proceed with the prayer request, but I'll just go over the three that, that I great. had sent. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, so the first one, and it kind of 
encapsulates what we've just talked about over the last 15 minutes. So please pray for our coming fifth year of this current term as we look to transition the responsibilities uh, for the Comio Christian Church. Um, there's, uh, that's probably the trickiest thing. Uh, one of, well, I should say one of the trickiest things here in Japan is passing over leadership to a Japanese pastor. Um, and as many of you know, we started praying in 2006 for a pastor um, in 2000, oh, I'm forgetting what year it is, 2019, the end of 2019 into 2020 is when we, we actually were provided with one by God. And, uh, and now we begin that transition of uh, going from one pastor to the next. And it's not just a one pastor to the next, like it happens in your churches, uh, but uh, also a big cultural difference because we ca we carry uh, you and American culture, uh, sorry, Canadians, uh, with us as we minister. And at, we try to lessen that as much as possible, but it's it's there. Uh, and, uh, and so that transition is really vital. Um, and in the midst of Corona, it's proving to be a bigger challenge than we had thought at first. Um, secondly, we'd ask that you'd pray uh, for us to have wisdom uh, and a clear sense of God's vision as we look towards where to start the next church plant, um, which again will start uh, in 2023 after we return from home assignment. Uh, we've had one kind of uh, meeting, one meeting which kind of touched on this topic so far, but nothing has been determined at all. So uh, over the next six months or so, we're going to be deciding uh, where the next location goes. Um, and that is, as the Stolers know, as the Wakeys know, <laughs> that's not an easy, an easy process. Uh, in Japan, there's uh, the idea that you could throw a rock and plant a new church, right? Like <laughs> there's just so many, 99% of the population is, is unreached. So uh, literally you could throw a rock and just start a church there and it'd be fine, even if it was just down the street from your last church. Um, but balancing that with the territorial idea uh, uh, of Japan, as I call it, the feudal mentality, um, and trying to say, okay, you know, there's enough distance away from other churches, and there's uh, enough distance away from other JBC churches, uh, but you're close enough for fellowship, and, and all of those factors go together, and it, it can be very tricky. Uh, so uh, please pray for wisdom and a clear sense of God's call on that. And we also ask that you would pray uh, as we are uh, greatly affected, uh, especially the boys are affected by the pandemic uh, and have had huge uh, educational adjustments. And uh, like Melissa has, has shared, whether that's Noah, uh, you know, not being able to get into a grad school because the programs have closed uh, or Jonah now kind of leaving, you know, his brother being out on his own, which is probably a good thing for him uh, or Elijah and his uh, fin finishing up this year well. Uh, online, which is not his uh, uh, favorite thing, I guess you'd say. He's a smart guy and he can do it when he wants, but it's getting that uh, energy. I don't know if that sounds familiar, mom, but uh, <laughs> apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, but it's just, uh, yeah, that he would be able to finish well and that we would be able to get him back uh, with his friends and teachers in, in person at Kansai Christian School next, uh, next fall. Uh, so those are our, our main three prayer requests for right now. Thanks to all of you for uh, choosing to be a part of this today. I really started realizing that those that were saying yes to this <laughs> um, were saying yes to kind of a commitment because it's close to bedtime for a few of you <laughs> out there. For others, it might be right in the middle of your work day a little more, or maybe we're able to set the time aside. Well, whatever the reason is, I'm grateful for all of you and that you chose to be here today. When I was deciding who to send this out to, I wanted to send it to, as many of you know me in that way, that your church supports the work I do, and you're probably located here in the U.S. or Canada doing that, and couldn't have done this and can't do this ministry without you. Um, but I also, in the spirit of what Gateway is about, I thought it would be really important to also 
invite the other side of the partnership of what Gateway does because I work with all of you as well, uh, whether it's Banush or Jolt, um, and there was others on the list that couldn't make it and sent their regrets, but uh, just so appreciative to have people from all sides um, as a part of this today. And as many of you know, it, it's not just for me ever a thing of asking for support, I'm asking for you <laughs> to be involved in this work alongside me as well and in your church and your ministry to connect and to partner um, with churches in, uh, in Kosovo, in Romania, in Canada, in the US, and the many other countries that we work with in with NAB. It's, it's been a joy and privilege of my life to be able to do this kind of work. And um, I can't tell you how much um, all of you mean to me uh, being able to do this. I think for, for those of you, just for a bit of an overview, I think what's probably good for me to share is just a reminder of what Gateway is about and, and what we're doing. Um, some of you have been around long enough to know that Gateway was pretty much about short-term mission trips and mission teams and doing that, which as many of you know, it still is in, in most respects. That's still a heart and soul and, and much of what the Gateway is about. But it's been probably um, a good 15 years or more that the articulation and the idea of partnership and long-term partnership and then as we started to zero in on who are we really trying to partner, we came up with this idea of sister church partnership and beginning to do that um, really became the emphasis. And that is really what is kind of the wave and the crest that we're riding on these days is of getting ministries and getting churches to partner with each other around the globe. And so it's been just really awesome to be able to watch that happen. The short-term mission trips function in our minds under the umbrella of these partnerships and happen in that way. And I know many of you understand that and have uh, participated in that and, and are in various levels been involved with it uh, for a lot of years. But as some of you um, should know as well is um, or maybe you can pass the word on to other churches and other people that you would know that if churches just don't have the experience in working it with churches from another part of the world, we're also wanting to give them opportunity to do that. And so we like to encourage and recruit and mobilize teams to um, just for a first touch, be able to go on a mission trip and do things like that. And so to that end, um, you know, this has been a really weird, um, what is it now, 15 months <laughs> that we've been in, in this whole thing called COVID, which we don't have to explain to anybody, right? <laughs> we all have it in common, like the air we breathe, literally, right, <laughs> throughout the world. And, you know, it, th there's some smiles that come with the familiarity of it, but we all know that it's, uh, it's a worldwide tragedy what's going on in in many countries and maybe some that you're more connected with or even living in it's it's just um just a, a tragedy what's going on um in the world right now and so we continue to pray and continue to trust that um, we're going to be able to move things in the direction and i really believe i think there's going to be some changes as we um, move into the future but I think the heart and soul of why we do ministry and partnership together is still going to be there. People need to be with each other. They need to be in relationship. And we can do it this way. And this is really awesome to do Zoom calls and this sort of thing. But I can almost tell you for sure that the number of people partnering with each other that Gateway has been a part of and other ministries out there would not happen if it was only depending on Zoom. There's no way. People need relationships. We know that in our local church, and we know it in the global church. 
We need to be with each other. We need to share time with each other. We need to be face to face with each other. And that's a value we've always had in this idea of gateway and sister church partnerships and doing that, that we've always felt that that's so important um, that people aren't just doing this in monetary support ways, but they're giving of themselves to each other from both directions. And that, that's what makes partnership um, really work and, and function and happen in the ways that I'm really proud of, of what we do in Gateway that involves so many of you here. So um, just a few things about that, and then I'll give you a bit of update of where things are at right now. Um, we, we still do the trainings that we do on sister church partnership. And I know um, many of you around this circle have been a part of that. I know Jolt was a part of those trainings over in Romania when I've done it. As Carrie said before, I've uh, done trainings here that he's been a part of. Um, uh, Paul, I, I know you've been a part of those, and Irv, of course, as well. Um, and, and so these uh, trainings for partnership ha are an integral part of what I continue to do. And over the past year, actually, during COVID, I've, been, I've done, what is it now, uh, three of them, three or four, three, I believe, um, entirely over Zoom of uh, partnership training. And I would say it works. Um, it, I think to disseminate the information and be able to share that, it works in that way. Um, but like I said before, I don't think it's the only piece of the puzzle, <laughs> but I think it's an important one is getting people to understand what do we mean by partnership and what do we mean by doing this as sister churches with each other. So that kind of training is still going on. The training I haven't done actually since COVID hit, um, I did one one week before, it was like uh, February 23rd or 22nd, I think both those dates, in California in 2020. And uh, two weeks later, I was not traveling anymore. And so it, it was the short-term mission leader training. And I did that one in the Sacramento, California area. And we're still intending to do some of those trainings, um, maybe over Zoom in the future, but still offer those trainings um, in, the, in the future and in person, and then maybe somehow using Zoom as a part of it as well. Um, another type of training that some of you may not know that I also do um, is especially for people that are hosting teams. So I'm looking at Banush, I'm looking at Jolt in that, especially for those that are the ones that are hosting a lot of teams that are coming um, overseas. And uh, that host receiver training is another one that I do and um, continue to offer uh, to our missionaries, to our local um, leaders as well in uh, different parts of the world. And so those trainings are continuing to be a big part of what I do. Um, the other huge element of what I'm doing is a, a lot of correspondence and coaching with people uh, through email, lots of um, uh, this sort of thing, uh, Zoom calls. And so all of that continues to happen under the gateway umbrella. And um, yeah, looking forward to where the travel will open up um, as this year continues on. Um, the other thing I should mention that I know not all of you realize that I'm also doing these days is I've taken on another hat <laughs> of being uh, kind of an associate field director in Central Europe. So some of you know who Ron and Jean Sek are and um, their oversight of Mariana Szymanski in, um, in Serbia and also Lazi and Esther Dorochi Chuhai in uh, Hungary and their connection with North American Baptist work. Um, I'm actually the main person overseeing those guys now and uh, helping with that and talking through transitionary things um, and moving towards what things are, are going to look like with Ron and Jean as they move into um, potentially retirement years. I'm not sure what that's going to exactly look like, but their NEB connection is something that I'm continuing to take more and more on. 
So I think in normal years, if COVID wasn't around, you would be seeing me, especially in Central Europe, um, maybe four times a year or so is what I'm anticipating and talking about. Um, obviously, even though I've had that role for a better part of uh, this last year or so, and have been participating with our uh, friends in Central Europe quite a bit, um, I haven't been able to be there <laughs> at all, not, uh, not for uh, close to two years now, or at least a year and a half or so at this point. But uh, we're all hoping that that is going to be changing in the future. So um, I think those are probably some of the main things I wanted to just give you updates on. I know I was asked to share uh, regarding my prayer requests, and so you can understand those uh, a little bit. Is that right, Karen? Or I should head here? Okay. Yes, um, you're good. <laughs> perfect. All right. Um, well, some of you may already know this, and some of it be news for you, but I'm, I'm having surgery tomorrow on my shoulder, this one, which it's a mirror look. It's the right shoulder. <laughs> if you can't tell which one I'm grabbing there. Um, I tore my uh, rotator cuff in there and also my bicep muscle uh, and those two attachments. So I have a two-hour surgery scheduled tomorrow, uh, past the COVID test on Sunday, and I'm all set to go. Um, it's at our time, it's going to be at 7.15 in the morning tomorrow. So I appreciate prayer for that, but also the harder work, I believe, will be afterwards. Um, I had knee surgery some years ago, so I know what some of the rehab is like, but shoulder is going to be different, um, I think. But uh, all the rehabilitation that will go on and the recovery with that. And then if you wouldn't mind praying for my wife, Shelly, because um, some of you know she is uh, – our associate pastor at our church here in, in Milwaukee these days for uh, about three years now. And, uh, but she's also going to be doing a lot of caretaking of me <laughs> over these next couple weeks. And so I ask you to pray for her that I'm a good patient, <laughs> first of all, uh, and not too demanding. I, I hope I'm okay. Um, I, I think she would say I'm all right, but um, yeah, but please play, please play for, pray for that, if you wouldn't mind. Um, another prayer request is my parents are uh, seniors. They're in their 80s. Uh, they live here not too far from my home in uh, Milwaukee, and they're about to move into an uh, assisted living complex. Uh, my dad is on kidney dialysis three times a week, has been for three, four years now, four years, and um, he'll still continue to do that. My mom is in fairly good health, uh, not too bad, but they're moving by June 1st. So you put that together, me doing surgery and them moving, I'm not going to be very useful <laughs> to them as far as carrying anything. And so um, just pray for their situation and my dad's ongoing health concerns. He also, um, he damaged, uh, completely had to be, have both of his knees rebuilt about three years ago. And so that makes him very weak along with the dialysis on a consistent basis. So it's pretty hard on him. So if you remember him, their names are Art and Irma. If you can remember them. Um, I'd also ask you to pray for just the moving forward of the whole ministry of Gateway with especially the partnership ministry. I think, you know, some people are really gung-ho and ready to get out there again. Other people are much more cautious about this. But I'm just really praying three things that churches and that people, and I think like yourselves, <laughs> so I'm praying for people like you and and, and others that you'd be courageous and motivated and willing um, as we go into this COVID normal world. I think it's gonna be with us for a while. And so I think people just need to be trusting and courageous that, that, that you know, the Lord's gonna provide for them. You do the right things and being a person that's always preparing people to go overseas as I always have been, 
I've always had to get shots and stuff. And so some people are like, what about shots and all this sort of thing? Well, you always had to do it in some way or another, um, especially with some countries. I think it's just going to be a thing now. So I just really pray people will continue to put the interests of the kingdom first and just realize here's your chance. Maybe it will require some amount of sacrifice on you. And I think that's very much in line with what the Father is telling us and what the Spirit is doing and sending us out. I hope you agree. Um, and then the last prayer request I'd give to you is this assistant field director role that I have in Central Europe and everything that I'm learning to do with that. And as I take on more and uh, understanding what the role is, Nobody's ever done this before, so we're really trying to carve out something very new and different and create that continued connection for our friends in Hungary and Serbia, those uh, national missionaries there, so praying for them. So I think, you know, if unless there's some more clarification on any of that needed, um, those would be the four things I'd ask prayer for.